In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, my name is Archimandrite Father Mikael. I serve as an exorcist in the Eastern Orthodox Church, and we're an autocephalous church from the one true canonical Greek Orthodox Church from the old calendar, or on the old calendar. And I do currently uh, fight against all ecumenism and all uh, pan-orthodoxy, all new calendar orthodoxy, and uh, I oppose all of it. I was baptized and chrismated in the new calendar, in the Greek, in, I'm sorry, in the Antiochian Orthodox Church back in the year 2003, converted from Roman Catholicism. I then shortly after a couple of years of being uh, Orthodox, I had uh, made my decision to, um, to leave my um, career of law enforcement and go into the monastic life, where I later became uh, tonsured a Rasa form monk, then a Spalber form monk, then was ordained uh, an acolyte, and then a subdeacon, a deacon, and then priest, where I served as uh, the main chief exorcist in our monastery. And for those first five years, most of my ministry, other than doing um, divine liturgy um, and all our monastic services that we do as Orthodox monks, uh, I was also uh, mainly doing uh, nothing but exorcisms. So in the fifth year of being a priest, I was ordained Archimandrite, abbot of the monastery, where I served as Eronda, spiritual father of the monastery there. So since that time, it has now been a total of 10 years, going on 11 years now, and I uh, have shut down that monastery, and I've been uh, traveling for the last year, um, possibly looking for a new uh, smaller uh, skiti or hermitage where I can be more alone with God and pray and uh, still serve as our commandrite and exorcist with the blessing of my bishop. So today what I'm going to do is be reading a little bit um, about the view of the Orthodox Church regarding uh, demonic possession and then I'm going to end it with a short exorcism prayer for what's known as Vascaña or the evil eye. I'll be reading from the booklet that I made taken from all the prayers of the Eastern Orthodox Church from the Book of Needs and if you've seen any of my other videos I've already uh, discussed this pamphlet before. So let's go directly into reading this. I do not want the um, the video to be too long, so I'm going to get directly into it, and this is where it's starting at. Exorcism in the Orthodox Church. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is with us by His grace and mercy, always now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the cross, world of God, and Savior Jesus Christ, may Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most holy Theotokos, Panigian, ever Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, pray for us. Kidialation, Kidialation, Kidialation. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Kidialation, Kidialation, Kidialation. All you holy saints and angels this day, remembered and commemorated on the Old Town of Holy Orthodoxy, pray for us. Kidialation, Kidialation, Kidialation. Amen. Our patron saints and holy guardian angels, holy angels, Michael and Gabriel, and all the bodiless host of heaven, pray and intercede for us without ceasing. Kiri eleison, kiri eleison, kiri eleison. Grant this, O Lord. Amen. Okay, Exorcism in the Orthodox Church by Reverend George C. Papa Dimitriou, Ph.D. The Doctrine of Evil. 
keep in mind this is the Eastern Orthodox view on uh, exorcism and demonic possession, which is uh, what we go by in the Orthodox Church. To understand the Orthodox view and practice of exorcism, one must know the Orthodox pre uh, suppositions of evil and its doctrine of Satan. And the patristic holy fathers of the church evidence points to the fact that the cause of evil in the world is the devil. The devil was created by God as an angel who was free and as a free agent chose to oppose the plan of God. That is, the devil is a fallen angel. Satan is not evil by nature, but by will and action. In Satan, there is no truth whatsoever. He is absolute falsehood and deception. Satan is not just a negation or a deprivation of good, but a positive force with free will and always chooses evil. The devil has the ability to recognize divine power, as in the incident recognizing Christ as the Son of God recorded in the Gospels of St. Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 11, and St. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Satan has under his leadership legions of invisible powers with their own satanic teachings. The devil and evil spirits know that God exists and recognize true and devoted Christians. But pious Christians discern the plans of the devil. And the devil, however, constantly employs every method of deception to enslave man to satanic forces and causes rebellion against God. He is the cause of corruption and disorder and patrist patristic power in the world that will ultimately be destroyed by the power of God in the last days. Because there is no compromise between God and the devil, the struggle will continue until the end. The orthodox doctrine of God is that he is eternal, uncreated, incorporeal, and all the creatures, both visible and invisible, were created by God as free. The power of the devil will ultimately be destroyed by the resurrection of the dead and the renewal of creation. Salvation from all evil will be attained by obedience to God and his plan. This world is a battleground between the acceptance of good and evil, and it must be pointed out that the world as the creation of God is not evil. What is evil is the satanic power, destroyed by the power of the cross and the resurrection of Christ. Now we're going to get into reading a little bit on the orthodox tradition of exorcism. After examining the doctrine of Satan in the Orthodox Church, it is imperative to proceed to the method of repelling and exercising the evil powers. In the New Testament, Christ sent out his apostles to heal and to cast out devils, recorded in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 8, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 17 to 20. Christ himself often expels demons from the possessed, as recorded in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 23 to 27, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 33 to 35, chapter 9, verse 43, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 1, St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 17, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 22. The New Testament, however, rejected popular uses of magic incantations and rites to expel satanic powers from people because they took advantage of superstitious religiosity. According to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verse 13, in the name of Christ, one is able to cast out demons and destroy the evil powers. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 8. The Holy Fathers of the Church accepted this doctrine and expanded on it. St. Justin Martyr, Apology 85.2, says that in the name of Christ, the Son of God, who was crucified and rose again, every demon that is exercised is defeated and submits library of the Greek Fathers of the Church writers, Athens, Apostle de Oconia, 1955, volume 3, and pages 288 to 89, if you read that. The satanic powers are destroyed through the power of the cross and the name of Christ. Objects possessed by demons, when exercised in the name of the living God, are freed from possession of evil. The patristic evidence is abundant in the belief in possession and expulsion of the devil by the power of the word of God. St. Ignatius, Epistles to Philippians chapter 3 and 12, Library of the Greek Fathers of the Church Writers, St. Clement of Alexandria, Stramata chapter 4 verse 14, in parentheses. The demonic possession of individuals and even of objects has been accepted by the Orthodox Church today in the sacrament of baptism in the exercise of satanic powers in the case of the evil eye, Vascania, which we're going to be reading that prayer in a little bit.
and in exorcising the devil in the case of possessed person in the early church exorcisms were performed by persons specially trained and appointed to pray and drive out evil from those about to be baptized and since the fourth century the place of the exorcist as well as other functions and ministries have been taken over by the priest the exorcism of prayers that invoke God to expel the evil spirits and the priest prays to expel all evil the spirit of error of idolatry of covetousness of lying of every impure act that arises from the teachings of the devil the renunciation of the devil in baptism is used in every baptism that is performed in the Holy Orthodox Church. Vascania, like I said, we're going to be reading the prayer about Vascania right now against uh, Vascania, the evil eye. Vascania, the exorcism of satanic powers, is also performed by the Orthodox Church and other rites such as the evil eye, Vascania. Vascania is simply a phenomenon that was accepted by primitive people as fact and they believe that certain people have such powerful feelings of jealousy and envy and that when they looked on some beautiful object or individual it brought destruction. Vascania is recognized by the church as the jealousy or envy of some people for things they do not possess such as beauty, youth or courage or any other blessing and the church essentially rejected Vascania as contradicting the concept of divine providence. The prayers of the church to avert the evil eye, however, a slight recognition of this phenomenon as a morbid feeling of envy. And the church forbids people to go to readers, fortune tellers, and these things, or other individuals for use of magical rituals to overcome the evil eye. These readers take advantage of the weakness and superstitions of people and destroy them spiritually and financially by playing upon their imagination. There is also a secret rite performed by superstitious people to avert the evil eye, which verges on magic. Though the church encourages even the laity to pray and to exercise evil, it rejects magical practices and all rites. The possession of individuals by the devil and demonic powers and a cure in the name of Christ is evident in the New Testament, according to, in parentheses, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 2, 8, and 9, uh, chapter 32 and 42, chapter 20, verses 7 to 12, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 8, St. Mark's Gospel, uh, chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, parentheses. The church continues in liturgical rites where Christ enacted in his ministry, and the church recognized the influence of evil and renounces it in the name of Christ in prayers and fastings. The prayers of exorcism in the early church were offered by special ministry through the exorcist. And this is evidence from the early prayers that have survived. From the fourth century onward, the ministry of the exorcist has been fulfilled by the priest. Orthodox prayers of exorcism. All the Orthodox prayers books include prayers of exorcism by priests to fight the power of evil. The Orthodox book of prayers of Cologian to Mega includes three prayers of exorcism by St. Basil the Great and four by St. John Chrysostom. They are read for those who suffer from demonic possession and every other malady. Through these prayers, the devil is exorcised, renounced in the name of God Almighty and the Lord Jesus Christ and commanded to come out of the victim who is liberated and redeemed by the eternal God from the energies or powers of the impure spirits. The great ills that humanity suffers are attributed to the devil and demonic power. From the orthodox theological point of view, the following can be considered exorcism. Number one, Christ is the exorcist par excellence, for he is, he it is, who won the victory over the power of the devil. Hallelujah. Number two, priest in the performance of the holy mysteria, the sacraments, and in the preaching the word of God, follow Christ. Example, number three, all Orthodox Christians are exorcists as they struggle against their own personal sin and social evil. In fact, the whole church, past, present, and future has the task of exorcists to banish sin, evil, injustice, spiritual death, the evil from the life of humanity. In summary, the four prayers of exorcism by St. John Chrysostom and the three of St. Basil the Great ask in the name of God to deliver the possessed from the captivity of the devil. Some can be healed by faith, accompanied by fasting and purification. And the use of exorcism must be made with discretion and great care. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit.
be with all of you. Amen. May the Lord God strengthen the holy and pure faith of devout Orthodox Christians of this holy church and this city and parish unto the endless ages of ages. Amen. With sincere agape in his holy diacona, the sinner and unworthy servant of God, Father George, pray to God for us. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know. I, and I, and I, don't, I know you're not saying that. Okay, now we're going to end this uh, teaching with the actual prayer against the evil eye, or Vascania. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the name of the Father, Son, of the Holy Spirit, O Lord our God, the King of all ages, Almighty and all powerful, who will create and alter all things by your will alone, who will change it into the flames of the furnace. In Babylon, that had been heated seven times more than usual and preserved in safety, your three holy use, the physician and healer of our souls, the security of those who hope in you. We pray you and beseech you, remove, drive away, and banish every diabolical activity. Every satanic attack, every plot of evil curiosity and injury, and the evil lie of mischievous and wicked men, from your servant and handmaid, all who watch this video, and those who do not, all those who are around me, now and forever. And whether it was brought about by beauty or bravery or happiness or jealousy or envy or evil eye, do you yourself, O Lord Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who love mankind, stretch out your mighty hand and your powerful and lofty arm, look down on these creatures and watch over them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Send them an angel of peace, a mighty guardian of soul and body, who will rebuke and banish from them every evil, wicked intention and desire and passion, every sin, every spell, every evil eye of destruction and envious people, so that guarded by your sub your supplicant so guarded by your holy spirit your supplicant may sing to you with thanksgiving the lord is my helper and i shall not be afraid what can men do to me and again i shall fear no evil because you are with me in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit Amen. For you are God, my strength, the powerful ruler, the Prince of Peace, the Father of the age to come. Yes, Lord our God, spare your creature and save your servant, Father Mikhaios, as we tell you, all those who are Catholic and Apostolic and Orthodox Church, from every evil and injury brought above by the evil eye, and keep them safe above every ill. For you are a king, and all things are possible to thee, O Lord, and therefore we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Unto the ages of ages. Amen. And that was the prayer against the evil line. Through the cross of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is with us by His grace and mercy, always now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. May you have a peaceful and a blessed day. Find the Greek Orthodox Church near you and to go to it and to once baptized and chrismated Orthodox. Seek those on the old calendar. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.